Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So I've had a very stressful day today. Um, we've had multiple outages at the Poloniex Exchange. Uh, if you remember back with the Cripsy Exchange, when I was talking about the inability to get coins off of the exchange, uh, we're starting to see something similar here with Poloniex. This is my trading account at Poloniex. Uh, you can see that except for Stellar, which I just purchased some, I'm pretty much all in USDT. Uh, following the crash of Poloniex, we had one last night and we had one this morning. The one last night, you couldn't log into the site at all. The one today was even worse because what happened was uh, the bots continued to trade while ordinary people could not trade at all. So uh, there are a couple of real active coins I've been following. Stellar is one. I'm currently long just a little bit of it um, based on this breakout. But the action was mainly in Steam and I was in Steam. In fact, this morning I was, let's see if we can find it here. Um, this morning I was long steam and a lot of us were pushing it higher and you can see here that okay this is last night's uh, shutdown of the exchange all those dashes where no one could log in you see there's no volume then you can see that it rallied back up to where it was and it crashed and this is something we see a lot with Poloniex uh, is that when something locks up then it crashes so I have very serious suspicions as to whether or not the exchange itself is involved with the trading I'm pretty certain that with Cripsy that was the case I'm starting to suspect that's the case uh, with Poloniex now we when I got up this morning I saw uh, this bottom put in in steam and let me give you the long-term view here uh, steam is a big it's a big mover and the only issue is is the move over because once the move is over it's over pretty much uh, and then move on to the next but I played this rise it's fantastic for buying breakouts and then selling quickly I like to buy and sell really quickly and get out uh, I could make more money by holding but when you're on an exchange that shut shuts down on you uh, it's very very dangerous right now you can see ripple is absolutely exploding um, I tend to buy a rising market that's how I play things and this one is tempting uh, you can see that ripple is breaking out on massive massive incredible volume I don't know what this is what is causing this I was actually waiting for a pullback to buy I don't think we're gonna see a pullback uh, so this one I think got away from me I may wait for a pullback you can see that it's a breakout that's another thing that you want to play is a breakout but and ripples been on a rise recently uh, with rumors that it's going to be adopted as a currency in Japan so crazy crazy action but back to the story the problems initially started with stellar and this is one that I played a lot of uh, back when it was rising you can see the rise here stellar went from about 300 to 4700 and it crashed the exchange actually uh, locked up and shut down when it crashed you can see right there that blank spot with no volume it's hard to see but that's what happened and that gave me great pause when I saw that happen and that was not the last time you can see right here blank volume and right here black blank volume so back to steam uh, what we saw with steam was I was uh, long coming into this morning and I was buying this rise and it was rising uh, healthily I was adding to my longs and that's how I uh, trade I buy a rising market I buy green candlesticks uh, as long as the candlesticks are green I'm still buying as soon as I see a red candlestick I'm out well what happened was this actually this red candlestick that we had I don't know if I can expand this 
this red candlestick that we had right here uh, I actually normally would have sold but I didn't I waited for this bottom and I bought more so I was long three Bitcoin worth of steam at this point and we had just broken out and I was about ready to buy more and you can see because of this volume spike someone had bought a tremendous amount and I was watching to see if you could get above the price that that spike put it at meant we were going much much higher and we were going much much higher and the exchange shut down you can see the volume went to zero but even worse than that the exchange shut down only for traders it did not shut down for bots so the bots continued to trade when no one could place a trade you couldn't do anything and here we go the price came crashing down now I was long a tremendous amount of steam at this point and I was locked out of the market so was everybody uh, completely outrageous and uh, they said it was a server problem it wasn't we saw the same thing at Cripsy uh, are they running a, a Ponzi scheme are they running a, a bucket shop most likely they're probably a bucket shop they for whatever reason have to stop arises in certain coins stop crashes in other coins you can see here they stopped the crash in the coin right there they shut down the exchange and then the coin recovered maybe they're trading maybe they don't have the coins maybe it's a fake book I don't know anyway the exchange came back online and it was crashing and I decided that you know what I'll just take mine to a wallet if I have to uh, I'm going to see if this recovers because I know what they want me to do. They want me to panic sell and take a loss. So I didn't and I waited for this rally and I sold and got out. So that's where we are now. Now let me get back. Maybe I can actually do some trading here. I don't know. Uh, that Because what I was going to do last night when I came home was to do a video of me trading. And uh, the exchange was down. <laughs> so I couldn't do that so hopefully I can do one here now this actually I'm probably gonna buy some ripple here so the way you buy a drop like this is that you well unfortunately I don't have any Bitcoin in my account because I'm on U USDT so I have to go into USDT ripple and then you can see here we want a drop to say 0.176 Oh, 0.176 maybe, or maybe we just want to buy it at the ask. Uh, nope, we don't want to because you can see 0.1809. So we don't really have very good asks here. The bid ask is not tight at all. And that's the problem trading in the USDT market. So it's going to be very hard to get in here. Uh, I may just have to buy at the market. So when I see something like this, you normally have a correction on a tremendous uh, breakout like that. That's very normal. 50% correction is good. Uh, so let, let's try to get in here. So the way to get in here is you just pick a high price, one that's above your market. And let's buy $300 of Ripple. So the trade executed very well. We got in. So now we'll, we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, we're banking that this rise isn't over, that this is the real deal, this is a breakout. One of the principles is that you want to take your losses quickly and uh, you want to uh, ride your longs. So if you're wrong, get out fast. If you're right, keep adding to the position. So hopefully we caught a ripple breakout here let's let's get back to stellar because uh, that's the one that I just initiated a position in before and it's uh, it looks healthy but it's not rising anymore usually I'm trading about five or six coins at a time I've been taking thousands of dollars a day from this exchange um, but I said to Jennifer this can't go on and it won't go on and I, I I'm taking my money off the exchange today uh, well I took off the max I could 7,000 for multiple days and I'm gonna reduce my trading account down to a couple thousand simply because I don't believe this exchange is legit but uh, so back to the trading here let's get back to ripple um, 
So the idea is you want to buy a rising market. Uh, now, when you're do, when you're buying a rising market, it, you have to buy on the ask, and that's you want a very very liquid market. You can see this isn't liquid because it's USDT. So the spread is wide at 188 by 186. So that kind of stinks, but you have to take what what they give you. So you want to be able to act fast. You can't act fast by putting in bid, you know, putting in a bid below the market or putting in an ask above the market. You have to buy and sell at the market. You have to be able to move really, really fast. So my bet here is that that is a correction in a much larger breakout for Ripple. And I use kind of a unofficial time stop uh, where if it doesn't do what I want it to do in X amount of time, I'm out. So the big question here when you look at the long term with Ripple is, is this going to new highs? Now, the way that parabolic uh, markets work is that you think you've reached the top, but when you go to the next level of parabola, it goes even sharper. And we thought we reached the top already. Maybe we didn't. Maybe tonight is the night where we find out that we didn't reach the top in Ripple. So that's how you play it long. Uh, you can play it short. Like I said, I bought the dip there, which is not playing it short, but kind of getting in on a low. My, my favorite way to buy is to buy on, on new breakouts. Now, if you haven't read Jesse Livermore's Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, you need to read that book. Uh, that is the essence of perfect trading strategy. You got have to come to understand that book. Um, because it teaches you how to buy a rising market and that's the only way to make money is to buy a rising market well if you know fundamental values and you know something is worse is quoted less than it's worth then you can but that silver is a perfect example of that we know that silver is worth more than it's quoted you still can't get the money that it's worth so you're forced to buy a rising market and sell a falling market and you have to do you have to buy the ask and you have to sell the bid there's no other way but you can make money that way. And I have been making money that way. But I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to keep making money that way on Poloniex. I'm going to reduce this account down to, you can see that I've taken uh, about 5,000 something today. And I took it yesterday. And I'm probably going to reduce this account down to about maybe one or 2,000. I would recommend that probably everybody else do the same because I think this exchange is probably going to shut down. I, the type of bucket shop action that I've seen here is very, very shady. Now, the exchange I think I'm moving to is probably going to be Bittrex, but I need to see the volume increase more. The bid ask here, for one thing, the trading screen is wonky. It's crazy. Uh, the bid ask is super wide because they don't have the volume of Poloniex. So a little bit more of the trading strategy. Uh, you're always looking to buy a breakout and you want to see how it handles itself. So normally I'm trading, I try to trade three or four coins at a time. It gives me more chances to catch a wave. And if the coin doesn't perform, I just come back and check them. One of the best ways you can do it is just you want to start off up here at volume and just pick the highest volume coin that you can find. And then just go down through the prices and look at the charts. The reason why is because the, uh, the higher the volume, the tighter the spread. And you have to have a tight spread if you're buying the ask and selling the bid. If you're buying the ass and selling the bid, you can see here on Ripple, we've got 107.44 by 107.45. That's a tight, tight market. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, but like I said, I will have three or four or five coins that I'm trading. I add to the ones that are winning. If a coin is not winning, I don't add to it. If a coin is going sideways, I'll keep an eye on it. If it doesn't do anything in a certain amount of time, I'll use a time stop and I'll sell it. Take whatever loss is there. If it starts to go down in a way that shows that it's not going to do what I expect it to do, I'll sell it. And then I will concentrate my efforts on the coins that are doing 
what I expect them to do, which is go up. So I add to my winners and I cut my losers. And that's another fundamental trading strategy that you will see in, in Jesse Livermore's book, in Market Wizards. Uh, it, it's a fundamental trading strategy that you have to follow. So it looks like we're pretty good here on Ripple. Uh, the big question is, are we going higher? This is another pattern you wanna look for. You can see how uh, we're edging up here. We're rounding up. That's very, very healthy. Uh, what do we have here? We check what we have. We have $300. So let's go ahead and add another $300 of Ripple. And we'll just pick a price above the market. We'll just do 2 0 and then we'll get automatically filled. And when we buy on the ask, we push the market too. So that's another thing is that, uh, you know, you wanna see how the market reacts to your trading. Uh, then it, what's gonna happen is the bids are gonna follow up as you push it up. I, I don't really see how I can push this market up considering how big Ripple is, but I've been seeing in the last couple of weeks that my trading is having a serious impact. I thought today that they shuts down steam and the whole exchange just because of me but that's probably just uh some kind of uh narcissism or something but it was very very disturbing so uh, i am gonna get my money off this exchange so let's go back to stellar uh that's the one that we were looking at also okay that's behaving very nicely you can see we've got green candlesticks looks like a new high so I'm going to go, and I'm stuck again in USDT. So I'm going to go ahead and add to my Stellar. I have 20,000 Stellar. I'll go ahead and add another uh, $300 worth of Stellar. And I'll just put in 32 there. That'll get me uh, in on the ask. Okay, now I'm carrying $900 worth of Stellar. And I'm carrying... Um, three hundred and sixty-four dollars worth of Ripple. Did I miss a buy? I thought I bought more than that. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, my account really hasn't changed. Something is off here. I'll have to review the video. I thought I bought more Ripple. Um, so let's make sure I don't have any open orders. I don't have any open orders, so it looks good. So let's get back to trading. Uh, I'm just going to probably trade out of these two, and uh, we'll just see if they perform. Very, very big volume happening on Ripple. You can see this is this is an unprecedented sort of situation going on. That's very, very bullish. Uh, the people don't come in here and buy a whole bunch of coins unless it's a pump and dump. And that doesn't seem to be what's happening here. So let's get back to the USDT. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to sell. Uh, I like to sell in Bitcoin. So I'll come out of USDT. I, I protected my account today because the... Uh, the price of Bitcoin crashed after the exchange shut down. It was the craziest day. This was the most stressful day of my life. I, I can safely say that. So it was an absolute, it was absolute insanity is the only way to describe it. And uh, I'm done with this exchange. I, I recommend that you probably want to be done with this exchange as well. I believe they're corrupt. I believe that they are, uh, it says I have, okay. I believe they're corrupt. Let's just leave it at that. So um, it looks like Stellar is still going the way we want it to go. We've got big volume. We've got a rising trend here, this rising arc. We've got new green candlestick. We're looking for a breakout. Uh, we want to see a breakout. We're already carrying a pretty big amount. So this is just short-term trading. You want to think about getting out, where you're going to get out, uh, one of the things I like to do is sell on just a tremendous spike. Uh, when it's gone so high you can't even believe it, uh, sell half because it might go higher. And then um, wait and see what it does. Sometimes you can add to your position. 
Um, sometimes uh, you just have to sell out. It just depends. Uh, earlier today with steam, I had, uh, okay, this is acting perfectly. Do you see that green candlestick? That's nipping up above the top here. Uh, so we've got big volume, we're going up. So Stellar looks good, I'm happy with that. Let's go back to Ripple. Okay, Ripple is looking good. The formation is correct. Uh, we have a, a higher, high, higher highs, lower highs, uh, I'm sorry, higher, low, higher highs and higher lows. That's how you get this, uh, m this moving up trend. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a breakout now up above. We want to get in the 20s. Uh, we, we don't, with uh, Ripple, I'm a little bit wary of it. I, I've got more Stellar because I know, for one thing, I know that Stellar has been absolutely crushed and destroyed. So one of the things I look at is uh, where it is relatively in the long term. Uh, in the long term with Ripple here, we're looking to get to new highs. So hopefully we picked a spot where we can ride this all the way up. With Stellar, uh, it has been absolutely crushed and destroyed. I think the top is in for a very, very long time. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't get fantastic bounces that you can play. And that's what we're playing right now. So it's looking healthy. I'm starting to think about a time stop on this now because it's not moving. Okay, there, it just moved. Uh, it should be moving at this point. Uh, okay, here we go. We're getting, we're getting some action here. So you can see here Stellar is moving pretty good. Let's go check Stellar over on the Bitcoin exchange. Uh, it's not moving as much, but we do have a green candlestick into a new high, so that's healthy. We like that. that that's what we want to see. Now at this point we're carrying 30,000. That's half a Bitcoin. Uh, I'm very reluctant to add to that position uh, considering how much Stellar has done lately. Now, the long-term Stellar chart, you can see that uh, we're way, way down. This is almost like a value buy. So I'm actually more worried about Ripple than I am about Stellar because Stellar, you, you can see it's all the way back to where it was back here. You can actually hang on to the coin or take it down to a wallet if you think that that's, you know, uh, it's, it's a decent coin. But uh, with Ripple, we're banking on a, a new high. Uh, and when you're banking on a new high, uh, the crashes are absolutely fatal. You have to avoid them. So if you see red, like here, this, well, I got in on that red, but if you see serious red coming against you, you have to get out. So it's getting pretty tense here. I just want to say uh, I want to recommend to everybody that I do not believe that Poloniex is any more a legitimate exchange. I believe it's Cripsy 2.0. Uh, it is not worth the risk, and I'm saying bye-bye to Poloniex, except for a very, very tiny trading account, and we'll talk to you next time.